Okay, hello guys, YouTubers. Um, this video is going to be about what does it mean when you say this stove is more efficient than that stove? What are we talking about when we're talking about efficiency? <clears throat> A lot of people say, well, the efficiency of this stove is this and the efficiency of that stove is that. And uh, it be my assertion to you that most people when they say efficiency, they have a definition in their mind of what efficiency is, but that's not necessarily uh, what the other person has in the definition in their mind of uh, efficiency is. So let's clear up some of these words that we're using. Uh, there's different emissions, different efficiency tests that are done on a wood stove. I want to touch on those. Uh, one is emissions test. Uh, an emissions test is done by the EPA. Uh, that's where they take a dimensional, a certain size, a dimensional charge of uh, wood and it's burned and the particulate matter in the exhaust is measured uh, throughout the dur uh, duration of several burns uh, with several different draft settings which if you're comparing a traditional stove versus a rocket stove, since a rocket stove don't, doesn't have any draft settings and it's pretty much open draft or uh, you know high speed draft really what's happening is is what the emissions test is reflecting the average of the wood stove and not what the wood stove can do when it's opened up and all the air is to it so there's a difference there um, it's a fairly significant so you're talking about having a wood stove with all the doors or all the uh, air inlets completely open versus it being choked down uh, and having that averaged out versus a rocket stove which has no <clears throat> uh, draft settings, right? Okay, uh, so that's one thing I wanted to point out. Uh, second thing I want to point out is that there is a heating efficiency, heating efficiency testing. And that's when they use a full load of seasonal hardwood designed to measure the amount of heat distracted and delivered to the space. Whenever you're getting into heat efficiency testing, uh, there's a couple things that you have to consider. One of the things you have to consider is uh, extraction efficiency. And that's the load is weighed going into the particulate, uh, weight going in and the particulate emissions and the ashes are weighed afterwards to see how well the stove is breaking down the fuel and getting the heat actually out of the wood, okay? <clears throat> and then the heat transfer efficiency is uh, performed in a calorie meter uh, room. Uh, it has temp temperature sensors in the room and it also have temperature sensors in the flue. And what it does is it tracks how much heat's being lost up the flue versus how much heat's actually being transferred into the room. Uh, Again, there's a you know a slight difference in uh, when we're talking about. So that's how much is lost up the flue. So obviously, when comparing a rocket stove with a traditional stove, you're losing a lot up the flue, right? But if heat transfer efficiency it has to do with how much you're losing up the flue, uh, I th it would be in my opinion that that could be broke down further. So it's what's going up the flue and it's in addition to what's being stored and how long it's being stored, right? And these things just aren't in today's ratings or not considered in today's ratings, right? It's just output, it's not any kind of, so there's not even a, a radiant storage. But if the temperature difference of uh, going up the flue, I would assert to you that water is going to lower that temperature easier, quicker than the cob is going to <clears throat> and I would also assert to you uh, that it, the water is going to hold a great deal more and because that total is high in the beginning even over time it's going to work out to be much more much more delivery so uh, a couple other things I wanted to say here and that is although a low emissions weight can improve a given stove's extraction efficiency score the total amount of particular emissions produced by today's EPA approved wood stoves is so small that the efficient that the, that the effect of the particulate emissions on overall heating efficiency score is negligible. 
Thus, even a model with a usually low emissions rating does not necessarily score a high heating efficiency rating. Uh, and, in addition to that, uh, the overall uh, efficiency of a wood heater, however it is measured, is the product of a combustion efficiency, sometimes called the chemical efficiency, and the heat transfer efficiency, which is that's what we're talking down here. And that's really when you get into the nuts and bolts. So the heat transfer efficiency is really what we're looking at. And I think that's what probably most people are thinking when they're saying efficient people say, that's not as efficient. As efficient at what, right? And then really, <clears throat> these things aren't really all the things because when we're talking about thermal mass, we're talking about efficient and how well it's storing, efficient over how, what kind of time. So this is a, it's a complex subject and I understand why there's so, uh, so, much, so much misunderstanding on it. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let's see, the overall efficiency of a wood heater, however it's measured, is the product of combustion efficiency, sometimes called the chemical efficiency, and the heat transfer efficiency. And all the car if all the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen contained in the wood fuel are converted to carbon dioxide and water by combustion, then the combustion efficiency is 100%. <clears throat> now there's several different kinds of losses that... Uh, I'm not going to get into all of them, but what I'm trying to show you guys and really point out is, is that when we say, oh, that's not as efficient, or that's not as efficient stove, efficient at what, right? It's complex. It's not cut and dry. Everybody's throwing that word around like, a, well, this is what it means, and, they're, and the way they mean it, it may be true, but in another way, it may not be true at all. So you got to be careful about, again, what you're calling your fellow man out on. You better understand what you're saying before you... Uh, what, you know, what the other guy is saying before you say something. Uh, the energy loss associated with the gases exiting the chimney at a temperature greater than room temperatures is called the sensible heat loss. Okay? The energy loss associated with water leaving the chimney as a vapor is called latent heat loss. All right? And uh, 972 BTUs per pound of water. Uh, energy difference in the vapor phase and the, and the water phase and the liquid. And, and from, there's 972 BTUs per pound difference in water and the vapor and water and the liquid. <clears throat> so, so there's all kinds of losses, guys. There's all kinds of efficiencies, efficiencies. We can get into latent heat efficiencies. We can get into sensible heat efficiencies. We can get into heat transfer sufficiencies, we can get into heat extraction sufficiencies, we can get into efficiencies testing, okay? So it's a complicated, it's, uh, you know, it's BTUs, it's uh, storage, it's, uh, it's a lot of things. So I hope this helps you guys understand that uh, how to use these terms a little bit better and, and you know, really just being aware of them and, uh, and maybe looking at it a little more complete. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.